Hello everybody and welcome to La Colina here in Spain for the Spanish Grand Prix qualifying. I'm here with Vince Freeze today. What's going on everybody? Looking forward to this race in Spain. Definitely going to be an interesting one. This track is very unique on the calendar. One of the rarest we go to. See what happens with some engine upgrades and whole storylines coming in. But we have no grip penalties. No grip penalties so far at least. Uh, La Colina, of course, is a track with um, an overpass on it, 22 turns. It's one of the largest tracks we go to all season. It is just over four miles long here, as here comes Evan Byrne, the first car out of the pits for qualifying. Uh, Jordan has not had a great start to the year, have they? No, and especially with Byrne, he's been marred by pen grid penalties in the last race, and I don't know, he just hasn't been the qualifying man. He's been in trouble with Curtis last race for bumping. He turned the curve, so we'll see if that rivalry heats up as we continue on in the season. Yeah, cars are a little bit slower this weekend. We've seen a little bit of rain this weekend, and the race is uh, slated to possibly be a rain race as well. Comes Blake. Uh, there, there comes, comes Blake Burn. with that new engine. Burn. Oh, here comes, uh, yeah, uh, there's Servino Rosselli's the second car, and then there's Darren Blake in the Sauber. The Sauber's got a big engine upgrade this weekend, as did the McLarens, the winners, of course, in... Um, New Zealand, the McLaren team, with uh, Jack Marriott here. As there's Evan Byrne on track. As you can see, the track is still a bit wet from an early rain shower here. As you can see, it is going a little slower than what he normally would be going around this track. But um, of course, like I said, you can't really control Mother Nature around here. As here he goes up to the grandstand section of the course through a long sweeping corner here. Uh, normally, this track would be a lot quicker of a lap time, but I think the weather mm -hmm. conditions have kind of made that a bit difficult here. Yeah, and you got to remember, too, another thing heading into this race. Like I said, where do you sacrifice the time? This is one of the rarest tracks in the grid. Like I said, it's one of the longest. Do you sacrifice the time in the straights for the corner line speed, or do you go low downforce in the straights? I'm looking for a package. Can Renault, I guess another one I forgot, Kenny. Renault leads the constructors. Haas is up there. Will those guys continue their dominance? Well, we see the likes of Ferrari and the pointless Mercedes. Can yeah. they get back in the fight? That's an interesting with Hashimoto. Yeah, Mercedes has led in both races so far this season, but hasn't done much other than that, you know? So there comes Jack Halleck out of the pits, as is Casey Nanico and the McLaren team. I have a feeling that this race is going to be the first There's of... Hashimoto. The first race where... Um, we're going to start seeing the typical order start filing out as, um, well, you know, the first couple of races have been a bit of a, uh, caught, have been a bit of a crash fest, an attrition-filled fest, so we're expecting this race to not be maybe that, unless if, well, rain can do almost anything then, you know? Yeah, if it does rain, then Renault and the likes of Haas, they're gonna be looking like the gods came down and helped them, but if it's like the normal races, pitch strategy comes involved, I gotta look for Anderson, man, Anderson, Oskin, those guys... Red Bull, always known for their strategy. I expect those guys, especially around the corners, right here, to be very fast. Uh, another pre-race storyline, not really. We're starting to fill up for the Cariala, 600 kilometers. Got more than 42 entries coming into the uh, field here. Could be seeing some Q races as we hit the round six coming soon. Yeah, as here we go. Evan Byrne had to deal with the lapped car there, or not the lapped car, uh, Daniel Adventure having an outlap there. That's going to slow up Byrne on his qualify on his hot lap here. Remember, only 10 minutes here, uh, and positions 30 through 21 will get solidified in this session, of course. And with this track, you don't get that many attempts to really set a quick lap time around here, do you? Uh, I'm thinking maybe three at most, because you got to think two minute outlap. Uh, I'm thinking three or four. About yeah, and that's uh, tank. Those are some out. Door. No, but those are outlaps. Yeah. Keep in mind. As yeah, here so they go around this corner. They should be quite a bit quicker than that. As here comes Burn. He's going to set the first hot lap around this track here at La Colina <laughs> International. This is a one fifty-two zero there. There comes, comes a couple other cars there on their uh, outlap here. Uh, we're looking for Servino Rosselli who is second in points right now. Right now, coming around the last corner on this track, rocketing up and over there. You actually catch a little bit of air there on that hump. Here's Rosselli to and the line. Rosselli goes with a 150, T1. so two Ooh. seconds faster. Darren Blake is even quicker than that. Oh, we're in the 149s now as DJ Curtis jumps to the pole. 
Remember, Ferrari has not qualified in Q3 all year so far. First two races, they've been knocked out in Q2 twice. Of course, Blake they with the won. update, Sauber P2. Uh, Kenny Mayan Kenny jumps to second there. there. Uh, Jordan needs a good weekend. Um, didn't expect Jordan to be that high up the order, though. The times are only going to get faster. The track continues to dry out with more cars. The grip's going to get back into these handlebars. Let's see what happens. Let's see. Is that... That's Blake third, Fitzwater to fourth, Bouchard to fifth. Here, Here comes, comes Oskin got held up by Tolfe there on his outlap. Or no, that was a hot lap, actually. Oskin 152.8. That's down there with Stark. Nathan Ormond. Wow. In a Benetton, jumped to third. It's a Ferrari 1-2 at the front of the field, though, as Jesse Turner... And eighth goes actually pretty quick there as well, as the field is just trying to work their way around this track. They're not going to get many qualifying attempts on this circuit. Jack Marriott to the fastest on the board. Jack Marriott, Marriott Salomeo oh. now jumps to the top of the power. board. Here comes Mikola on the track. Mikola actually 16th, but of course not, not everybody set a time. Is. Evan Byrne jumps up to 11th there. Number 21st, 20th is the time that you want to beat there. Casey Nanako bumps Marriott there. There comes Hashimoto across the line. That should be a quick time. Second on the board. It's Second, Mercedes 1-2 at the top of the grid. Except now oh, Max here, Anderson. There's, there's, there's Red Bull coming into play. Darren Blake. Now watch the Saubers here. They got a big engine upgrade here getting, in their Ferrari engines. What is for Sauber going to do? No improvement there for Darren Blake. Here comes Bouchard in another Ferrari-powered car. Kenny, we got Sam and Oscar in 28th right now. That's concerning for that Red Bull. That, that is concerning. He has currently been held up the entire lap by the Toyota of Anderson, Julius Anderson here, having a very difficult time getting by Julius Anderson here. Oh, Anderson's not giving away either. Yeah, and this is not going to be an easy move. For Oskin to get by, and Oskin could be out in segment one if that's the case. As oh, we got also, some cars Jack coming Howell in. Too. Jack Howell lingering down there in 23rd. And Oskin because... finally gets by there. Does he improve his time at all? Yes, he does. He's up to 18th, but that's still a lot lower than that Red Bull should be in. There comes Definitely Turner the across seat. the line along with Grayson Ace Vito. Ace Vito jumps to 7th. Here comes the Williams of Vince Freeze on track now. He's down in 16th right now. His power has really been a big thing here. Freeze does no improvement there. Yeah, Williams isn't looking good so far. Fitzwater's right there in 15th. Pat Nicola six. down in 22nd, currently out looking in. We'll have maybe one or two more hot laps. No improvement for him. Evan Byrne from 17th. Oh, wow. Change at the top of the grid there. Nanako bumps Hashimoto. Meanwhile, Hashimoto bumps back Nanako. It's Blake. Blake and Curtis. Curtis are coming onto the track. Now, Curtis has had a toe this entire lap here. I think this could be top of the board for Curtis, or if not top three. I don't know. You know not with how quick Darren Blake came off the corner there compared to no, not Curtis. No Curtis. improvement. No. Sean R, P8. Orman, P9 for Benetton. Sneaky. Benetton doing pretty well today. Down the order, currently on the outside looking in, we have Halleck, Halleck Otz, Mikola, Tanker. Tanker actually qualifying better than Julius Anderson. Behringer, Willing. Oh, Force India again. Struggling in 26th and 27th there. Roush, Stark, and Tolfe down the order there. Remember, the top of the board doesn't really matter here. 50 Here seconds. comes Anderson now. Anderson's all by himself this time. Looks like now that Oskin's gotten by. Oskin to third! Flyer from Oskin. Anderson does no improvement there. That Red Bull is just hooking up. Roush yeah, and Tolfe go by. Fitzwater to eighth. Here comes Freeze and Salomeo. Of course, they're Ooh. not um, currently fighting for... Um, knockouts right now. Uh, if you're somebody like Casperson down there who just got an engine upgrade. Worries right there, because Halleck's a fast car. We know he can do some damage. And Casperson is out on track right now. Keep in mind there. 
Joaquin Casperson. He's got one of the Jordans behind Tolan, let's see. And now, we're in standby mode. Everyone can complete their laps now. Last three in. Oh, a little bit of contact oh. there between Casperson and Myatt there. Myatt's going to get held up there, but Myatt's safely into the next section. He's in 13th. So there would have to Eight. be some very crazy stuff if he would get knocked out here. we got to uh, circle back to Halleck on standby. Where is he? He's definitely the guy. Halleck. Who, uh... Oop, that's Tolfe there. Ooh, Halleck battling. is battling with Hashimoto. That's not what you want to do, actually, there. And Halleck, after Haas' second in Constructor's Chiss standings, isn't right now doing very well today here at La Colina. Of course, Big props to Daniel Adventure in 19th. He makes it a Q2 for that Toyota. Got well, to not sure just yet, but got to finish this off. It. And then you've got a couple of other things here coming up. Still no Hal changes through. at the front of the field. Halleck through the grandstand section. Here we go. Yeah, this is all on Halleck now. Can Halleck make it work? Oops. This is a very long track, if you ask me here. and it'll This only... is one of the longest, yeah. Yeah, one of the longest tracks we go to in this series. And, well, what can you say about a track that Halleck. requires a lot here? I actually think Halleck might not be able to make it back around. Only 14 seconds. He's going to have to put on the, the Jets. How that's going to happen? He's going to have to put on the Jets just to make it back in time. No, He's only up five out. seconds. That's not going to even work there. Adventure might be the last car to get it. Adventure holds 19th. That's it for the session there. So the cars done for this session are Halleck Tanker in 22nd in the Arrows. Good to see Arrows up far up the grid. Otts, Mikola, Anderson, Berenger, Willington, Rausch, Stark, and Tolfe in that order. So, with that being said, uh, we will see you in Q2. Welcome to qualifying, or Q2 here. We've now added DJ Curtis to our broadcast team. What do you got to say, DJ? Well, it's great to be back as always, so hopefully we have an interesting Q2 session. I know I missed out a bit on Q1, so I heard it was a bit of a whack, to say the least, down there. It was a little bit. I mean, Halleck and a Haas, who's second in constructor standings, not making Q2 was a little bit over the top. But overall, it wasn't mm -hmm. too crazy here, as here comes one of the Williams cars out of the pits. That's Vince Freeze. Not wasting any time. Not wasting any time, because as you know, with how long the lap times are around here, it takes a bit to get around here. Nanico. Here comes Nanako out. Nanico, yep. So, what do you know about this track, DJ? It's very much a high speed like track. You notice the track very much wide as well. So there's a little bit of room for error, but you want to get those corners basically X2, get those apexes in just so you can nail that lap time. And well, Vince Freeze out on the track right now. He's certainly trying to get used to the track. Yet again, remember these drivers in qualifying trim, so we're not, they're not going to necessarily be in a race trim to say the least. You know, they're getting here. themselves set up to get more accustomed to the racetrack. As here we go around this track here. We didn't really go any onboard views in Q1 here. Do you think this track will have a safety car in the race at all, do you think? It's 35 uh, laps. It could, because like I said, we don't know the weather, and if the weather turns bad, that's one. And number two, that first S is chicane. We've seen it, whether it's a rolling or staying start. Sometimes guys like to force the issue three wide. That could be a hard accent the way the, uh, the barrier angle is on that wall. And as you, watch that here as you know, in, in Formula Omega, if there is a rain race, uh, it goes to rolling start, not standing start. And it's looking like we might have a rain race tomorrow as we go around this track here. Of course, the track is still a little bit wet from the earlier rainstorm that we had. Uh, speed should be picking up a little bit more in this session. And then probably in Q3, they'll really ramp up. But here we go down the track here. We get to the back side. Here we go. Here comes Vince. This should be the last corner coming up right here. Yep. He gets through this left chicane here. All and right. here and we go. Up. Now he will be going on to his hot lap. Got to be real careful with some of the bumps around here because you can catch air. All right. Into the turn one S chicane. Here we go. He's going to get that right. 
Nice center right pick right there right to the left. Yep. Whoa! Oh, no. Bitch the issue, freeze! Though. Way, way wide there! Hold on, we gotta take a look at that! That was a very scary incident there. That could have been really bad. Yeah, he carried too much. He swung way too hard. Yeah, he went right. way too much momentum. Way oh, too hard. Tried to oversteer. It took a little oversteer, and then he was suffering from understeer at the same time. The Those first two corners stuff. are such an illusion. They always look like they're high speed corners, but you have to slow down a lot more than you anticipated. And that was really the that's really a definition of the consequences right there that Vince Freeze kind of pulled off there with that understeer and mixture of oversteer varying on how hard you drive that corner. Those really those few sectors in set in that case. So, so we're with McLaren here. So how how does it feel to be back kind of in the home area of uh, Formula Omega here in Europe? Is this kind of an easier section of the schedule for drivers? This is the more familiar. We do have a lot of Europeans on the grid. But at the same time, because we're in Europe and we know the tracks are variety in nature, you know, that first whole, that first European race, I have to call this a wild card race. Now that we look at the European stretch, you got to get the jitters out there. A little bit of home crowd for some of the drivers in Spain. We're getting close to these you know, races where it's going to be strategy. Let's see if this is the race that we have the order or do we have unpredictability like we saw in the first two. We'll see. And here we go. We're on board with Casey Nanico, which who was, the, was Salomeo the fastest in segment one? Yep, Salmeo P1, yep. Alright, and then it was Anderson followed by um, oh, Hashimoto. And this is where the engines really wind up is through there, because that's a six-gear corner, and oh, a little bit wider for Ferrari. Nanako. Coming up that's very summer. quick here on DJ Curtis, the Ferrari. And, and this Curtis is going to hold up. Started, yeah. Curtis might have a problem with that car, because there's no way that that car is that slow off oh, the grid there. Too wide into the S. Nanako did close. a 149.5, and I think Nanako could have gone a lot faster there. Freeze, of course, did a 151 by being slow. Yeah, there's some... Oh, whoa, whoa, oh, whoa! That was correct. close! Did Nanako go off? Man, that second corner is a bit sketchy there. As Kasperson, who nearly got bumped. Watch this, just very, very... Good control there. Hug that curve really well. Almost got close to that gravel trap. Oh, here comes Zachary Fitzwater here. Of course, his teammate went off in turn one. Fitzwater, 148.7. Great, great run there for Zachary Fitzwater. We saw the Benettons in the top ten in the first segment, so Orman and Ard at 150s. That's pretty good for them. Could be a sneaky top ten. We'll see. Both the Benetton cars have been. Up, though. Yeah, they've been quick. They weren't fast at um Surfers Paradise, but once we got to Pukekohe, they were really quick here. And this track is a very fast, twisty track. Uh, kind of the same speeds that you expect at like Pukekohe kind of track. Nanako to f or Marriott P2. jumps into third. Anderson yeah. P two now. Where is Salameo and Hashi Hashimoto just comes across the line? Where's Salameo? Right now, the Brazilian driver comes onto the front stretch. This is going to be big because he's got Ozkin in tow. Salome only sixth. Ozkin only Ozkin. sixth now. Yeah. So that, that slipstream really helped that Red Bull. Yeah, it did there for him. You're right there, DJ. As we go onto the track, there's Bouchard. Of course, his teammate got knocked out. Freeze jumps up to third, trying to get around Bouchard yeah. now. Nanako now on track. The only female on the grid jumps nowhere. DJ Curtis. Lap, DJ Curtis on his hot lap only finished 17th there. I think DJ might, and Grayson Ace Vito once again might not make Q3 at this rate. Only got three minutes to spare though, so we'll have to see what the Ferraris can do to really pick it up. But definitely one of their big weaknesses as a team is their qualifying trim compared to their race trim. Yeah, I think Kenny, we got we got Toyota. I mean, Williams. We got Williams BMW one three. Anderson splits them. Williams has always been showing up in Q two a week, just like last week. They surprise, but can they carry on to Q three if they make it? Also, Kenny Myatt in sixth right now. That's an impressive run there, if you ask me. Looks Look at like that we, uh... right behind the Ferrari though. And that is uh, Servino Rosselli back there. Behind Grace and Ace Vito. Renault's having a great start of the season so far with how well they're doing in the Constructors' Championship, as well as just getting those double points. Really, overall, they're a very consistent team right now. Yes, they are. As Grace and Ace Vito is pulling on that Renault little by little there. 
that's what he's got to do, if you ask me. Just do as much as he can to get going. And that should help out there. And now we are on Is track. Still here. Still no changes at the top of the board. Right now the cars going home would be uh, Casperson, Ard, Turner. Ace Vito now bumps up, so it would be Blake and Casperson. Keep in mind, they had engine upgrades this week. Ard, Turner, Ormond, Byrne, Bouchard, Rosselli, Curtis, and Adventure. Hashimoto jumps to second. Curtis. Curtis up to eighth. Oh, Curtis that that could be enough. a Q3 berth for him. That might knock his teammate out, actually, because Acevedo is literally in 11th right now, so he's in that bubble area. Oskin is now as well. Yeah, Oskin might. No improvement know, yeah. for either of the uh, Saubers there. And here comes Fitzwater, Fitzwater the provisional pole sitter. He improves time. Let's see. No improvement there. As here like comes it. Ard. Can Ard sneak a top ten? Answer. Negative. No. Normand, nothing there either. Here comes Marriott now. Marriott is solidly in third. Going to be in Q3 at this rate. I think the big surprise in the top 10 has still got to be Kenny Myatt up there. Yeah, Kenny Myatt. Especially Myatt's considering no guy that Ace Vito is on the outside looking in. And here comes Hashimoto now. That's really the Sally, only surprise Sally. up there is Myatt, really. And oh, Myatt goes quicker. Myatt jumps, jumps up to 6th. Good lap time. Here comes two more cars in the leading group. Austin's still behind the slipstream of the Mercedes there, so let's see what he can get out of that. Here comes Nothing Ace Vito. Really this is a driver to watch here. He's going to get one more hot lap here. Should be able to cross the line just fine. But no improvement. He improved it a little bit. He improved it, but uh, couldn't nope. really get anything. Also, I believe uh, Turner has jumped hard now. There's Adventure. Yeah, jumped, no improvement. Uh, Nanako, no improvement. DJ oh, both Curtis. the Renders aren't gonna be are gonna make it past Q two. Yeah, at this rate winners. at this Ooh. rate, yeah, they're not gonna make it to Q three, so that's a big, big letdown there for Reno. We were wondering if Reno you weren't in here, but we were wondering if this is where Reno's championship is gonna start coming apart after a really good start to the season. Looks I like that might be the case. Oh, there's some that. battling Ooh, going on that. up ahead. Wow. With Nanako that's and right uh, adventure there. Adventure, of course, is just happy to be in the uh, second segment of the qualifying session. As here we go around again here around this track. Overall, what do you think some of the keys to managing this track is, DJ? Just getting into rhythm. It's really like with any other racetrack is that you need to get into a rhythm and just limit the mistakes you have on the racetrack, though. And you mentioned it being a potentially a rain race, so also just keeping the car really on the track because the conditions are so treacherous when it comes to the rain. Despite the change of tires, you know, we have the wet compounds and the uh, what was it, the intermediate compounds, but that can only get you so far. Just a matter of drivability and how you can just keep the car in one piece, but being swift and fast at the same time. And Vince and I were talking, too. Two big surprises have got to be the Saubers down there with their big engine upgrade that they got this week. They're down in 12th and 13th. That's a surprise to me. Yeah, I didn't think Sauber would uh, be this low. I figured they'd be at solidly around at least 6 and 7 challenging the top three teams, or at least we think the top three pecking order teams, Mercedes, Red Bull, and Ferrari. Uh, this could be a letdown. I don't know. We'll see. But like I said, could they be playing a rain setup for the race? Who knows? And that's it for qualifying right there. So your starting grid right there or so far. So the cars going home would be Ace Vito. Again, does not make Q3, but Ferrari did. DJ Curtis made Q3 today. Um, not Ace Vito. Ace Vito, uh, Blake, Casperson, Turner, Ard, Byrne, Ormond, Bouchard, Rosselli, and Adventure are all done at this stage so we will see you for q3 welcome back everyone to um the knock the final knockout session here at la Colina. so we now have seen 
a couple of cars make it here. Here are the cars that are participating in it. Um, I think pretty obviously, I think the 10th place car is probably going to be my it here. But you never know, right? You never know what me and DJ were just discussing in this little break here. Uh, we could see a surprise pole center. We know Mercedes has won the last two poles with Hashimoto and Salomeo. I'm going to go for Nanako with an upset, really, because I know Nanako blew the engine last week, and she gets the redemption. And McLaren does definitely look good on that grid. They they were looking really hot in both rounds, and, well, they could really hit that golden spot here in Q3. My prediction for the fastest car is actually going to be Vince Freeze. I think oh. Vince Freeze and the Williams, both Williams cars, makes the final qualifying session. That's a good thing. Uh, did either of I, Fitzwater has single-handedly outperformed Freeze all year, basically. Now, finishing result at uh, Surfers, obviously not, but because uh, Fitzwater fell out. But Freeze is looking very fast around this track, maybe a little too fast that one time in turn two. So let's see what happens. As yeah, we go up the, the track. In the Williams, really. Um, Fitzwater, I remember both Williams have been up to pace, so both teammates are, both team cars Working are really well. looking great, yeah. though. What do you think Kenny Might is? He's the one car on this the grid outlier. that kind of surprises us in the top ten. Might is, of course, one of the uh, drivers to watch, has been one of the drivers to watch in the past. He's driven for McLaren and a couple other teams. Um, had a Ferrari ride lined up, and then Grayson Ace Vito showed up and had to settle for Jordan this year. So what do you think his expectations are? Jordan's had a really rough start to the season, and now they're once again in Q3 like they were in Surfers. So we go on board with him here. I think Kenny could Oz, I, I'm going to say he sneaks a P8 or 9. I think one of these top tier teams are going to struggle in this session. A top 8 or 9, especially with an unpredictable weather condition type race. I think that's a, sa a satisfiable result and makes Eddie Jordan happy too. I would certainly agree. Definitely within that range would be a, really an ideal area. Mayan definitely outperforming in that Jordan. You compare that to Burn. And well, Mayan's certainly doing the best he can in that. In that particular car and well now in the q3 session he really could surprise a lot of us here he was near the top five area actually in the q2 and oh uh, he could try and repeat that process but you never know how things could pan out and keep in mind evan burn qualified i think sixth in australia uh didn't finish very well i believe he ended up upside down on the backstretch in surfers paradise but myatt here Looking very strong here. He's had a lot of... I think he's blown the motor twi in both races this year, so... Here we go for Kenny Myatt. This is a track where he has done well in the past. Of course, he is a former winner in this series. Uh, winning at Watkins Glen last year in the McLaren. And um, going forward here, he was actually a championship contender. He was fighting with DJ Curtis last year. So, Myatt does have the speed here. He's just in a car that... Quite frankly, a lot of people were surprised he took a tumble this far down the grid. I wouldn't really say it's much of a tumble, really, because he's trying to do the best he can. I think the only issue that really hinders Jordan as a team is reliability, because the speed is there for really both of them. Again, Burn didn't maybe have the best qualifying result, but again, we already know the potential that this team has in store for this season, and it's only been the first two races, so... Still have plenty of time left for Jordan to really pick themselves up. We still have upgrade season. That's the great thing about this European leg. This is where you really get to sort it out and get those upgrades, especially come from the later rounds where you need it. Do you count? Okay, I know it's still early, but are you beginning to start counting out like the Mercedes cars for the Constructors Championship since they haven't scored any points yet this year? No, because we know one, one, two. We, we know McLaren, McLaren nearly pulled it off last week. A couple one twos or a one three or a one four even. That's all you need to get back in the hunt. So I won't say no, but if they don't pick it up by race five, then yeah, it's going to be a little tough. But these first next three weeks are going to be crucial for Mercedes, for sure. Jack Marriott, fastest car. Oh, go ahead, DJ. I would very much agree with Freeze there. Um, it's really not too late, to, or it's a bit too early, let's just say that, to really count out many of the constructors that have had rocky starts, because we know the speed is there, as we mentioned. You see uh, one of the Williams getting around Hashimoto, that is Vince Freeze. Vince Freeze, but, yeah. Besides the point, like you mentioned with Mercedes, they, you know, it's still plenty of rounds left. And also, we have to consider knowing the Formula Mega Series that attrition is a thing. So, if other constructors decide to really struggle, so let's say Renault struggles, they're going whoa, to. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Hashimoto went wide there. Sorry to cut you off, but. 
No worries, but it looks like he actually got a little bit squeezed out the drag by the Red Bull there. Okay, and this that should it. be a sign of what's to come in the race. I don't know if two wide's going to work there, especially if we get unpredictable weather. That could be a dangerous area in turn one, two complex, as we said at the beginning. Well, and, and even if we get a standing start, too. If we get a standing start in this race tomorrow, it will be a very hectic uh, turn one, two complex here as the field kind of maneuvers their way around the backside of this course. Um, so we've got Marriott P1 right now, Oskin P2, and Nanico McLaren looking strong. Uh, Kenny Myatt fifth, actually faster than a Mercedes and both the Williams cars. I'd say some are on their warm up laps here, so maybe they're not quite up to temperature with their tires. But here right now, Curtis. Marriott, you mentioned being the quickest car on the track. And Curtis, DJ Curtis, Ferrari? the only Ferrari, is in eighth still, uh, as Ozkin is in ninth. Here comes Salomeo. Uh, Salomeo is probably going to jump to the top here. I'm guessing. No, he doesn't. Uh, could this be another McLaren pull? And uh, I believe McLaren was the team that got the pull in um, Hashimoto did not get the pull in Surfer's Paradise. I have to correct you there, Vince. Uh, McLaren oh, okay. did. That was Jack Marriott mm. pull in Australia. As there goes, gotcha. that would be Fitzwater across the line in seventh. Uh, we're still missing one car here. I believe it is... We're missing somebody. That Anderson 12? No, Anderson is fourth. Hoskins there, so we know he's all good. It has got to be there. Well, so whoever it was just set a lap. I believe it might have been Hashimoto there. Oh, yeah. Hashimoto went wide. That's right. And Hashimoto doesn't look very quick either. This I'm, is just looking like a... I'm just surprised that the Ferraris aren't doing a lot more right now. I think for Ferrari, I th I, like I, I think DJ was saying, could they be playing the long game, the race pace, right? Because we know Ferrari's got... In race pace that's second to none in this especially in the first two races i think teams are looking at the weather tomorrow they may not, maybe hold them back we've seen sandbagging you know we've seen teams sandbag and and really go for that race pace this could be another one of those examples we'll see and now here we go around this track with two minutes 34 to go before cars can uh take their last hot lap marriott fastest car on the track by nine tenths of a second um huge gap but we've seen faster laps right here. We've seen the 147s before. DJ Curtis and the Red Bull behind him. Curtis jumps to fifth. Ozkin stays in second. No improvement, though. Here comes Salomeo, the New Zealand pole sitter. No improvement for him. Here's Fitzwater. Of course, Fitzwater down in eighth. Yeah, Williams down 8 and 10, not looking good so far in this session. Let's see. Let's see I thought Fitzwater they'd be pole look. sitters contenders, really. Looks so promising in Q1 and 2. Fits? Nothing there. Oh, I'm watching Hashimoto and Anderson here. Good tow. Great tow for them on this track here as they go through the final corner. I'm guessing one of these three cars might move positions here. Uh, a that, little bit of wiggle from the red ball off the corner. Here comes Vince. Vince Freeze gets a great run there. Fifth, Fifth. position. As does Anderson Hashimoto and Hashimoto. So all three of them... Gained spots there. Here comes Nanako. That's my pick. Let's see what can happen here. Third on the grid. Has to gain nine-tenths of a second. I don't know if anybody's going to catch Marriott's speed there. The flyer on the lap from Marriott. I think Marriott laid the wall down. That could be a pull run there. Here comes Myatt here. I'm kind of surprised Matt Myatt's Myatt. faster than a Mercedes and a Williams car here. And Myatt's going to come across the line in his Jordan Honda. And is going to not improve, but still, good job in eighth. Jack Marriott, the fastest car on the track right now. Can Marriott get over the second boundary? Let's see, for second. No, Marriott's in the pole. Yeah, it's over a second, over a second, that's what I meant. Let's see. Nothing nope, there, nope, as here comes DJ nothing. Curtis and Sam and Oskin now. Can they improve their lap time? Neither of them do. Nope. Tires are falling off. Here we go. Salomeo now. I don't think anybody's going to come near Marriott's pull time there. I really don't. I'm going to take a replay on that one. That one looked very good because it was Fitzwater. Fitzwater might. I don't think Fitzwater's going to get another hot lap, though. Four seconds left. This is going to be his might time. Might be able to clock a lap in this for this, this one. This one he will, one. yes. But Fitzwater 
is going to be starting 10th. No, now, this group is quick, we've seen. We've seen Anderson, Hashimoto, and Freeze has been very quick around this track. Is Wow. Ooh. Uh, that's really going to cost them, actually. It's going to cost That's going to cost a lot of time. And that's going to... F Man, Vince Freeze is so good over that hump. But no improvement by any of the three. If anybody was going to do it, it was going to be them. And here comes Nanako. Nanako. Could be the Can last make shot for Nanako. Can they, it will be the last shot. Can they make it a McLaren 1-2? Answer. They improved, Negative. But, improved, but stayed in third. Kenny Myatt, I don't think you're going to get a pull run out of this car, but it's impressive Great to run. see him in eighth with the Jordan. He's only a thousandth behind the Ferrari, as you notice. 149-476 at the moment. Let's see what he gets across the line. Here he comes, Kenny. No improvement. No improvement. Jack Marriott, you basically got the pull, so don't even bother, really. But I'm just going to cruise it now. Just cruise her home and see if you can maybe set a track record here. The 147.8. No improvement nope. for you. DJ Curtis. Curtis and um, Sam and Oskin. Awesome. Oskin's the second fastest car here. Wow, look it's at Curtis's show, is run out of that corner there. But still had nothing. And Salomeo is probably going to be the last car to set a lap time here. here comes Salomeo across the line. Wow, that's not a good starting spot for Salomeo in ninth. So with right, that Kenny. being said, Fitzwater's not going to make it around. So Jack Marriott gets another pull in a row here for McLaren with Sam and Oskin in second position there. Casey Nanico in third. So, out of that group, what interests you the most? I'm going to go with Kenny, obviously. Kenny might in that Jordan 8, as we said. We, we expected him to have a win in the sense if he didn't get 10th, and he did what he was supposed to do. Um, McLaren, looking mighty as always. 1-3 on the grid. And we never know with the rain. We could see the rain, possibly. Could be a track position race. Could be a staying start. A lot of variables heading into this. The unknown is real here in Malaga, Spain. I think really a lot of disappointment, really, with the uh, Mercedes and the Williams team here. Williams definitely looking quick early on in this qualifying session, really early this this these past few sessions. And, well, disappointing results for them. Sixth and tenth for Freeze and Fitzwater, respectively. And then there's the Mercedes team of Hashimoto and Salomeo. I, I think they wanted a lot higher up on the grid than they wanted. But, again, with like what Freeze pointed out, rain is imminent, at least maybe, potentially. We'll have to see how that goes with weather conditions. And we could see some different variables from tire wear and basically the weather conditions overall that might hinder the driving or enhance some driver abilities. With that being said, we will see you for tomorrow's race tomorrow. See you then.